now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 607 here on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here on this Monday morning, launching you into a big time week here in the nation's capital, the last week of March. And the Cherry Blossom Festival and all this. Are there any blossoms left after the rain? Oh, I think so. Did you check? Yeah, I didn't look, but right. I'm sure. Um, why are we playing this? Uh, oh, we're, we're back to the cocktails in Virginia. All right, Michael. It's a bit of a th- <laughs> Sorry. <I> just, <laughs> there's something about this song in particular that I just, I find the lyrics so odious. The man's story is, you know. Yeah. The Pina Colada song. Mm-hmm. All right. Joe DeGeneva joins us at 7.05, at 7.35, now Gardner, and then at 8.05, Tom Fitton will be our guest. It's Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning. All right. Let's move on from Rupert Holmes here and move back to Ronna Romney McDaniel. She's the former chairwoman of the RNC. She now has a contract with NBC News mm. to appear as her first appearance yesterday was on Meet the Press. Listen to Kristen Welker preparing her audience for this traumatic oh, moment yeah. that they're about to yeah. experience. I'll be joined by former RNC chair Rhonda McDaniel in her first interview since stepping down as party chair. In full disclosure to our viewers, this interview was scheduled weeks before it was announced that McDaniel would become a paid NBC News contributor. <laughs> this will be a news interview, and I was not involved in her hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure about her colleague. Uh, the, uh, it's not going to end well for Ronna McDaniel. And then Chuck Todd did like a little round of Chuck, Chuck Todd is the anchor emeritus of Meet the Press. Yes, and yes. I guess he gets to come on there and do a therapy session with Kristen Welker about how awful it is that she has to appear on screen with Ronna McDaniel. Dive right in. What were your takeaways? Look, let me deal with the elephant in the room. Uh, I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Um, She wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? Mm. Once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that. That's part of the job. So what about here? I I will say this. I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting. Mm. have been met with character assassination. So it is, it, you know, that's where you begin here. Uh, do you notice who's never mentioned in this entire conversation? Ooh, Larry. The viewers, yeah. the people, the American public who might want to hear from. I and gotta, what's funny is funny. even Republicans don't really, aren't very fond of Ronna McDaniel well, let's, right now. Let's, let me address that a little bit, you know, because I certainly do not agree with Chuck Todd because obviously his concern here is the, um, appearance of any Republican, his um, uh, yeah, his colleagues, the professionals. Yes. Um, but you know, let's, uh, you know, we always talk about how, like the View, uh, they like these sort of traitorous Republicans or self-hating Republicans or apologists, right? right. Who are constantly like, well, I'm not that kind. I'm a cool Republican. I'm like super Michael cool. Steele on NBC News, exactly. or uh, uh, the woman who got was with uh, uh, Sarah Palin's campaign and now has her oh, prime yeah, of time course. show. Well, uh, Nicole, she's forgettable. Nicole Wallace. Nicole Wallace. Thank um, you. But you know they always have these sort of um, again self hating Republicans on. They also like Republicans who aren't exactly successful. <laughs> and uh, you know we lost the House in 2018. We lost the Senate and the presidency in 2020. Um, uh, we're on a razor's edge in the House right now. And this was all under Ronna McDaniel's leadership. Many would argue that so, much of it was her you fault. Know, I actually d- I don't agree with Chuck Todd because, you know, he's just disgusted that she is a Republican. But I am it. She fits that bill mm-hmm. um, for NBC. Oh, and she'll be 100 percent. She'll be to the left of and Michael she, Steele within a year. And I will year. tell you, she did reveal. I don't disagree with Chuck Todd when he said she ch- he kind of re- she sort of revealed that she says what she is expected to say so that she keeps getting paid. Right. She said that. 
She said, I, I, you know, I was the RNC chair, so I had to say things that I didn't necessarily believe. And she'll probably do the same thing because NBC is paying her. Well, exactly. You know, so and she did reveal that. By the way, and, and everybody needs to grow up here. We're going to get to actually what Ronna McDaniel said, but I think that the bigger story is is Meet the Press and NBC News and the hand-wringing on the left. Oh, yes. Because I, I'm sorry, you know who else was never mentioned in this? Jen Psaki. Right. Jen Psaki just spent a year lying to the American people, lying to his professional colleagues at NBC News about the pandemic, about Hunter Biden yes. and his art deals, yes. about tampering with social media companies to silence stories that they weren't agree. She was literally the mouthpiece for a censorship program yes. at the White House. And now not only is she just a contributor who shows up and speaks her mind on Meet the Press once a week, nice gig, Rana, she's got her own show. Yeah. She's got her own show. And sorry, can we go back a little while to George Stephanopoulos? Oh, when yeah. he was hired by ABC News, his job was to bully and intimidate other reporters to not write about Bill Clinton sexually assaulting women. That was his main function in the campaign, to tamp down so-called bimbo eruptions. And now he's a champion of journalism. They weren't mentioned either. Now, I'm not saying Ronna McDaniel is in any way like them, but... Give me a break. <laughs> that exactly. this oh, our journalistic integrity. When NBC made the decision to give her, her. NBC her. News's credibility, you got to ask yourself, what does she bring NBC News? And when we make deals like this, and I've been at this company a long time, you're doing it for access. Access to audience. Sometimes it's access to an individual. So Chuck Todd's wife is a major political advisor in town and ran the political strategy for Bernie Sanders presidential campaigns. Mm. Ch- disclosure? Uh, compromise? Access? Access. Access. Uh, Chuck Todd is Amy Klobuchar's landlord. He rents a property to Senator Amy Klobuchar, who also ran for president. Is that disclosed on a regular basis? Does that get him access? Does Actually, he probably access? has a key to her apartment. Chuck Todd used to work on Capitol Hill for Democrats, of course, naturally. Any access involved there? <laughs> He's not the only one, of course. Uh, by the way, Jake Tapper also mm. used to work for Democrats on Capitol Hill, and that helps him get access to. I want to know what Chuck Todd does to get access for his job on a regular basis. But that wasn't even disclosed in this segment where he's ripping Ronna McDaniel for her so-called conflicts of interest. Um, And we can have a journalistic ethics debate about that. And I'm willing to have that debate. And if you told me we were hiring her as a technical advisor to the Republican convention, I think that would be certainly um, defensible. If you told me we're... We're talking to her, but let's let's see how she does in some interviews and maybe vet her with actual journalists inside the network. See, see if it's a two way what she can bring mm. to the network. So I do think, unfortunately, this interview is always going to be looked through the prism of right. who is she speaking for. Unbelievable. Right. I think you did everything you could do. You got put into an impossible situation yeah. booking this interview. And then all of a sudden the rugs pull out from under you. You find out she's being paid to show up. That's it's unfortunate. For this program, but I am glad you did the best that you could, and that's why the three of us are on here to to try to um, bolster that editorial independence. I, I wish NBC News would just fire could you, all could of you them. Calm down, this. white savior. Okay, yeah. talking to Kristen Welker like she yeah. needs some sort of like, hey, honey, I'm Pat. You did the best you could under difficult circumstances. Right. I mean, yeah. kind of sexist. Um, by the way, wasn't Kristen Welker a moderator of a Republican debate that was managed by Ronna Romney McDaniel? Um, I would like to know, as we're doing full disclosure, did Ronna McDaniel speak with NBC News during that NBC News televised debate when she was still the chairwoman of the Republican Party? When did the discussions begin with NBC News while she was still the chairwoman of the RNC? Also, by the way, didn't Kristen Welker boost her profile and therefore her value to this company or the next company she might work for by moderating that debate from Ronna Romney McDaniel? I think that there's a lot of conflict to go around. Let's turn to our colleague Simone Sanders to get her analysis. Uh, oh, wait, she just worked for Kamala Harris <laughs> right. in right. the vice That's president's okay. office okay. and then ran Bernie Sanders' campaign. But we never hear any hand wringing over Simone Sanders being on the panel with no, us. We don't. It never ends with these people. 660. WMAL, making sense of social media because big tech can't be trusted. Download the WMAL app to stream us for free. 
when you're the RNC chair, you, you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. <sighs> well, thanks for confirming everything, <laughs> Ronna McDaniel, about what we were. And it should be pointed out that uh, President Trump, when given the opportunity to either support or not support Ronna McDaniel, he supported her. He was fine with Ronna McDaniel a year ago. And, you know, this is judgment calls sometimes on this. But uh, here goes Ronna McDaniel um, admitting that it was Trump who basically said, you're done here. Let's dive right into this and start with your decision to step down as RNC chair. If you can take me behind the scenes a little bit. Were you pushed out of your role? Well, there's no question that as RNC chair, you have to remain neutral. And we had a primary process. And so we did have debates, right? We had debates and there was tension and a little friction that started during that process. It was well played out in the media. And I knew at that point when I was doing that role and we were going to have debates that when the nominee came forward and it was likely to be President Trump, that they would want to switch. And that's his right as nominee. And so were you pushed out by him? He, he absolutely wanted me to, to move aside and wanted Michael Watley and Lara Trump to come in. Were there any questions about, you know, the expenditures at the RNC on flowers and limos right. and, you know, the right. actual And the cost. fact that we lost everything over a series of right. elections. And the fact that uh, we caught her, and it shouldn't say catch her, she said on an interview that she was asked by Glenn Youngkin to stay out of the Virginia yeah. state races not, in 2023, which, she, which, which the chairman of the uh, Republican Party said that's not true. At no, all. We, sp- we they actually were asked. begging for yes. money from the yes. RNC. Uh, and it's funny, she hasn't come on the program since we got her to actually, you know, tell the truth and say that. And she's never been able to back that up. That sort of became the beginning of this last stage here. It's just so frustrating. I mean, color me shocked that Ronna McDaniel is a politician. It's right. typical. Right. But, but I, I love the fact it's like, I. I would get – they're all wringing their hands about how awful it is that we have to have Ronna McDaniel. We can't tell if she's telling the truth and who knows what kind of message she's delivering. And now she's just paid to do this and paid to do that. I would give Ronna McDaniel a tougher interview right now than Kristen Welker just did. Oh, absolutely. I've got Because I've got questions from a Republican's perspective. Yeah. Then instead of them asking the same old, oh, here's here's my favorite. Oh, what about January 6th? January 6th. Do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. And so. And, and neither, neither does, does Trump, Trump, by the way. Trump and the, he didn't say that. that. He's right. not going to free all the Januarys. He says those who are are in, unfairly being imprisoned. Yeah, there are people, and there are people standing on the lawn. Right. There, there are people in different states. There are people are si- facing charges for I- I, um, illegal parading. Yeah. For walking in the rotunda women. through a door that was held right. open by a police officer. Right. That's not somebody. And there who's... are police officers who say that they were, you know, critically injured, right. caught on camera walking around. Perfectly fine. So what was st- uh, the question again from Kristen Welker? Do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not day? think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with that. He's been uh, saying that for months. I, Ronald, no, why hasn't. not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? Uh, again, he's not said that. He hasn't he has been not. saying it for months. He, says he specifically those who are hasn't unfairly said imprisoned. anything about violent people. Right. And right. of course, people who were violent... Trump has never disagreed that those people deserve to be prosecuted. It's 622. Well, for her troubles and for NBC News's troubles, by the way, uh, there's a development here in the Ronna McDaniel things. Here's Ronna McDaniel bending over backwards saying, now I can say what's really on my mind. I'm not trapped by the RNC. Yeah. Give me more money, NBC News, and I'll tell you everything that you need to know. Just, you know, make sure you help pay my mortgage. <laughs> uh, MSNBC has stepped forward and said that she is banned from their programming. So for for all the money that they've given her, NBC News has basically purchased somebody who has already been humiliated on Meet the Press, their sort of crown jewel of their news operation. And I guess she'll show up on election night or debate night coverage on NBC News as one of like 20 people who are allowed to talk at any given moment. It's yeah, just and a maybe nightmare. and maybe sort of do pre-recorded reactions to things. Um sort yeah. of someone who's on call. But uh yeah, they they've certainly limited her. And look, when you walk into the belly of the beast, when you walk into enemy territory, you're not going to be treated well. What's strange is Cesar Conde is the uh, president or chairman of NBC Universal News Group, which oversees NBC News, MSNBC, and CNBC. 
Why can't he just say, screw you, MSNBC. I, I, hired, everyone. I hired her. You're, she's, you're going to put her on the programs because I say so. I mean, but they would have a revolt there. That's the new thing. Like like the New York Times reporters revolting over Tom Cotton's op-ed. You know, it's, it's like, so funny, too, Larry, when you think about it. The head of the RNC, you don't get more moderate, milk toast establishment than the head of the RNC. She said it herself. She's like, you know, yeah. you have to remain neutral. Right. So she is like she frankly is a perfect person if you want political political analysis right uh, from the right yes and they consider it's, her a fascist because well, trump liked her until That's he didn't right. can i just ask it because we're pretty plugged in on the news and pretty plugged in. who's the chairman of the dnc i have no idea me neither <laughs> neither does Kristen welker i bet <laughs> right. it's really amazing how Good it's all, and it, it's not news unless it's trump news Six thirty. WMAL FM, Woodbridge, Washington, a cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. News now. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 637 today. It's O'Connor and Company. Thanks for getting your morning started the right way. We're a more. America's morning show. You That's know. right. Good morning. Good morning to you, Julie Gunlock. Coming up later in this broadcasting extravaganza or streaming extravaganza, depending on your method of delivery, at 7.05, Joe DiGenova will be our guest. 7.35, now Gardner will give us his examination as a uh, a Brit, well, a, a naturalized American Brit, expatriate, mm. I believe, expat. Mm. Expat, that's He's right. He's an expat. He'll talk about Kate Middleton. And then Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch will join us at 8.05. All right. We just sort of broke down what was going on over in the the bastion of liberal media, MSNBC and Meet the Press. Uh, Now, on right of center media and conservative media, there was some drama over the weekend as well. Friday afternoon, uh, Jeremy Boring, the uh, CEO of The Daily Wire, who, by the way, uh, produces and presents uh, the audio content that we hear every night here at 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. That's the Ben Shapiro show yeah. and the Matt Walsh show. That's, of course, also their very popular podcast and, and other streaming video things. They do movies. They do a lot of stuff at Daily Wire. Yeah, they do. But they don't do the Candace Owens show anymore. No, they don't. That was the announcement that Jeremy Boring made on Friday. And there has been some tension over there for sure. Yeah. Uh, between Candace and really all of the other hosts because Candace – listen, when you hire Candace Owens, you get – very outspoken and yes, controversial mm-hmm. statements. And I know anything that's like outside of the mainstream is suddenly labeled as controversial. And because she championed a thing called Blexit for Black people to leave the Democratic Party, when she um, became well, Candace Owen is black, and right. she is uh, she identifies as being conservative, um, and and she sort of you know was a Democrat, was a liberal, and sort of walked away from and that. was quite anti-Trump actually yes. for a little while. Right? Um, and and so so that in and of itself, being a black woman, is you know as a conservative, right. and she is she's. She's outspoken. She's not quiet about it. So no. and 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 you get that. I mean, yeah. sh- when she um, created, a, she was a YouTuber mm-hmm. and she created a huge YouTube audience. It attracted the attention of many people, good and bad attention. That's mm-hmm. what happens. Mm-hmm. And when you make your hay in that realm, the more controversial that you are. Oftentimes, Mm -hmm. the clickier you are, Mm -hmm. the more people hate you, the Mm -hmm. more people love you. And she got the attention of Kanye, by -hmm. the way, uh, who ended up really sort of bringing her into the circle. And Daily Wire brought her in and gave her a huge paycheck and brought her show and developed various projects with her. But as of late, uh, ever since Kanye sort of did the whole, you know, I'm going uh, thermonuclear on the Jews kind of thing. Yeah. And listen, she stood by her friend. But, and, and, and listen, I, I do want to preface this by saying I'm good friends with Andrew Clavin. He's right. Clavin, Jeremy, and Ben Shapiro, the th- those three, and I have been friends since the earliest days of sure. Andrew Breitbart and everything. And I maintain friendships with the three of them. A- Andrew Clavin and I just had lunch the other day Mm -hmm. actually didn't discuss this in any meaningful way but i tuned in with great interest to his podcast friday because he he went live Mm. or not live but his show his show was recorded like right after the candace owens thing happened and he said listen i love candace i think she's incredibly talented i think she's great 
But as of late, she's been saying things that the, our brand, Daily Wire, can't be associated with. Right. We just can't be. Right. And that's not a free speech. Anyone who's screaming free speech or cancel culture, I know. Yeah. please. She's got plenty of yeah. platforms to be able to do whatever it is she wants. But, you know, she... Again, stood by Kanye West because he Look, was the friend it, but th- but this, with the whole thermonuclear uh, you know, on the Jews thing. But she she was flirting with she she actually did a segment where she says, you know, I've just found out that you know the books that the Nazis burned that Adolf Hitler burned. Well, a lot of them were very pro gay, pro trans, and oh, so geez. it's like when you're throwing down with book burners, yeah, you know, and and lend and again it it damages conservative arguments that we're trying to make because we're not book burners. Well, but, uh, we just want to pick what books that our children read. And then the last thing, just real fast, yeah, and I'll yeah. let you jump in here. No, sorry. She had a public spat with Ben Shapiro yes. over Israel. Very public spat uh, over Israel, which is fine. And Ben was like, I completely disagree. I think she's being odious, but the platform wasn't taken away. She liked a post, she liked a tweet by somebody who was debating Rabbi uh Rabbi Shmuley Bateik. And the person commented to Rabbi Shmuley Bateik on Twitter, um, what's wrong, Rabbi? Are you drunk by drinking Christian blood? Yeah. And she liked it. And she liked that. Yeah. And it's I'm, you, you, you take it too far, well, I think. And, and you can't associate your brand with it. And I think and I get it. I do. Just really quickly, you know, I work for the Independent Women's Forum. You yeah. know, I am not allowed to say insane things. I mean, there are standards. Because uh, you're for, carrying uh, that am, brand with you. Even, you're carrying independent women. You know, and this whole, like, uh, opinions are my own in your Twitter bar. It doesn't matter. People associate me with IWF. Right. Frankly, I have gotten, my you know, my bosses have gotten notes about things that I've tweeted, right? Because sometimes you can be a little bit controversial. I believe or I have things. pointed out a couple of your tweets <laughs> now and then. <laughs> the point is, is that if you do, if you're truly independent, you have your own sub stack, right? Right. You don't have a boss. That's the beauty you of it. Do, do, you know, drinking the blood of Christians, not nice, not good, yeah. really kind of gross, but go ahead and do whatever you want. But if you're affiliated with an organization, they are going to be concerned about that. And if you keep doing it, you're going to be let go. This isn't controversial and it's not free speech. She can go out on her own. She can get a sub stack. She can say whatever wacky thing she wants to say. Clavin, it's funny because Clavin is one of the few news and pop culture podcasts that I listen to. Usually I just listen to religious podcasts and apologetics, things like that, history podcasts, mostly because I don't want to accidentally repeat them on the air. Oh, if I'm listening to news people all the time yeah. or opinion people, yeah, I don't want to. I Yeah, I see that. Clavin, on the other hand, though, first he's on Friday. Well, he's and he just funny. does it weekly. Okay. and he's also. But here I am actually repeating what I heard him say, but it's very relevant to this. He made another point that's incredibly important. Candace started doing this thing. In, his, in her debate with Ben Shapiro, where she would just tweet out, Christ is king, Christ is king. And all these other people kept <laughs> tweeting out, Christ is king, Christ is king, as if it's a weapon, yeah. as, if, as if it's some kind of weapon against Jews. And I agree that Christ is king. And what I know about my king is that he was Jewish, and he loved the Jewish people because my Christ, who is king, is God, and God chose the Jewish people. So when you're using Christ as king as some sort of weaponized debating Hedgel, point yeah. against Jewish people, you've missed the plot. That's yeah. not really you got to go back to the scriptures. And as my friend Bethany Mandel pointed out, you know, all of the uh, on social media over the weekend said, you know, all the people who were screaming Christ the king to defend Candace Owens, funny, they weren't at Palm Sunday mass <laughs> observe, welcoming the king into Jerusalem again uh, this weekend, uh, and uh, and the Jewish people were all celebrating Purim. So we had other things to do with our faith than use it as a weapon to, to beat someone Ultimately, else. Ultimately, though, Larry, this, it's unfortunate sometimes. I feel like, you know, the, Candace Owens it has a, a big megaphone. She Incredibly could direct. Incredibly talented yeah. and really, she, really good a right, lot. On a lot of things and actually very influential within the black community. Yep. And, and so it is unfortunate. I mean, I really, I, I'm with you. You know, both of us hate these sort of fights where we're like, mom and dad are fighting. Right. I just, I want to climb under the covers. Um, so yeah, ultimately who loses are persuadable, I think liberals, persuadable Democrats who might have been persuaded by some of these great arguments. And now they're just focused on this silly fight. Well, and again, I think this is because they hired, when you make your name with YouTube mm-hmm. and with podcasts and you don't have the same kind of I don't want to use the word constraints, but um, guardrails mm-hmm. yeah. that a broadcast yes. medium gives you. Right. And, and you have to approach a topic and the way you present a topic in, I think, a more deliberate way right. to be yeah. able to convey those ideas, argue your point, 
but not necessarily, you know, praise, you know, Hitler for burning books. <laughs> um, in YouTube and podcast world, that's the gold mine, man. Yeah, when you right. do that, you're gonna the, you're gonna more hit controversial it big. the better. Yeah. And by the way, media companies like Daily Wire. I think maybe they need to be more thoughtful sometimes because, well, they're huge on YouTube. Yeah, okay, but there's a reason for that. Yeah. And maybe, you know, think through exactly if you if you know what you're hiring. And listen, the only argument against Candace Owens being fired that I understand is it's not like this is a surprise. Daily Wire knew who they were hiring. So what's their beef? And you know what? It's true. If if I were if I talked to Jeremy Boring about it today, I'd say, dude, what do you think you were getting? You know, Julie Gunlock, when we draw attention to stories here in our local area, I do like it when people say, oh, you have a local show. Yes. We're in Washington, D.C. Are you kidding? We yeah. have a giant megaphone. <laughs> All of the national politicians listen, listen to, to us, us. And so do the producers and of their the staffs. cable news shows. Yes. So when we focus on a local story, it becomes a national, sometimes mm-hmm. international story. And, well, once again, uh, you and the folks at Independent Women's Forum have brought back a story that we were discussing as well. This has to do with Loudoun County School Board's uh, decision to turn off the cameras. Yep. And it has now reached the attention of President Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. He took to Truth, Truth Social and said, if the wonderful parents of the students in the Loudoun County School System would want to gather along the Great Potomac River at the Trump National Golf Club under the beautiful flying American flag for a gathering or a meeting, there can be no more magnificent or significant place to do so. As my guest, just let my club manager, Trent, know when, have fun, <laughs> save the students in all caps. And this was a highlight of uh, the story that we've been talking about there. But also, uh, uh, you, there was a story at Independent Women's Forum that he linked yeah, to as well, Yeah, so he right? linked actually to a story in the Washington Examiner, oh. Loudoun County School Board members appear to hate free speech. This is about <laughs> Loudoun County turning off the cameras and, right. and actually considering even more restrictions on parents being able to speak at school boards. But this was written by Stephanie Lundquist Aurora, who runs our IWN chapter in Fairfax. And that woman is, I mean, she is a machine. She cranks out one of these stories, um, much like Nick Minock. Yeah. Uh, she is revealing a lot of things within Loudon and Fairfax that are, are sort of concerning. Well, and then this all sort of plays on each other, on itself, because I looked at that article at The Examiner, and within it is a link to the story about the issue. It gives all the facts and yeah. all the details, and that was written by our very own executive producer, Heather Hunter. Ah, very good. Which also, again, this. is part of the show that we do here yes. in the program. Is So it all comes back together. The point is we're <laughs> we know on, the best people. And we're on Trump's radar, right. and he is now <laughs> elevating the issue of the censorship and That's the lack right. of transparency at Loudoun County School Board meetings. So now I guess we're going to have the school board meetings over at the uh, Trump National well, that Golf sounds Course. Great. But also it really does send a message that Trump cares about the parent issue as we move further and further away from COVID. And that the Trump people listen to WMAL. That's right. At least in the mornings. 6.53. Making sense of your world. I don't know where to begin. News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Thanks for taking my call. Making sense of the news. Kidding. They listen all day. They were listening to Mark Levin the night before, and then the station just happens to be on when they wake up in the morning. That's really what's going on here. That's right.